Hi guys, it's Vonna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, and today we're going to learn how to make flat, round ornaments with some embellishments, and I will tell you exactly how I make round my, my round ornaments. This is the next one that I'm going to do, and you can see I already have my mat boards cut out, but I use a round template. This is a Fiskars template that I got probably 15 years ago in the scrapbooking aisle and it is invaluable to me. This one and the oval one, completely invaluable. I don't know if they still make them, but um, if you can find them, pick one up because fantastic. Okay, so we're going to do the cow and I have cut out three mat board pieces. I'm going to put Aline's white craft tacky glue, which is also acid free. My mat board is acid free. And this is just Aline's that I put in a squeeze bottle because it's easier on my wrists. I have a wrist problem and I always keep my tacky glue in a ball jar upside down. The inside has, um, I have like a little cardboard piece from a ribbon, um, a round ribbon holder in the bottom to catch my glue. And I, this is like a stalagmite. <laughs> and it has, I put my tip of my squeeze bottle in there and it just sets in there so the glue is always, it seals it off so it doesn't get dry in here. And um, it's always ready to, I don't have to squeeze every time because I have really bad wrist problems from all the finishing that I do. So glue on one of the circles, put the other, an other circle on top, and then I use these very high tech clothespins to hold this down so that, so that it doesn't ripple. Okay, while that's gluing, drying a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and put cotton batting on the back, this will be the back of the ornament. I use, my cotton batting is 100% cotton. It is warm and white. You can get it at Joann's with a coupon. It, it's, it's on sale frequently. So you just put a little glue on it, press it down into the cotton batting and trim around it. And there you go. Okay, next we're gonna go ahead and put the backing on our ornament. So I get my homespun out, I put it down and I trace, I just make a circle. I cut a circle of the batting or of the material around my circle that I wanna cover doesn't have to be perfect. As you can see, mine is definitely far from perfect. Then I'm going to get some upholstery thread and I'm gonna thread a needle. And I have my quilter's knot on the end, make a knot on the end. If you watch my other videos, you have seen me make quilter's knot several times and I'll have another option, another chance to show you how to do that later on in the video. Okay, so we have our cotton backed backboard of our ornament. And now I'm just going to do a running stitch all the way around this backing fabric. Just in, you just go up and down, up and down and pull it when, you're th when your needle is filled with fabric. See, it just made a, a running stitch all the way around the outside of the fabric.
once you've got back to the beginning, you just open up your little pocket here a little bit, put your cotton backy, cotton batting side down. Make sure that your batting lays flat. Mine had pulled up there, so you want to, you know, you always want to check. Once you've got the um, the batting down flat and it's all inside, you just pull it, and then we're going to make a star shape with our thread just to hold that fabric on evenly on the circle. There you can see my star shape. And we're gonna end off. So make your lasso through your lasso twice. Pull it and clip. All right, there's our back, okay? Now then, this has had time to set while I've done that. And we're going to add some glue to this. So we have two layers of batting and we're, I mean, two layers of mat board and I'm going to put two layers of batting on the top. Again, no other reason, no, there's no reason for it to be structurally better or anything like that. I just like, aesthetically, I feel like it's pleasing to the eye. And after 15 years of finishing, I have probably finished a thousand ornaments, literally, probably closer to 2,000 ornaments. And um, I just found that it, it, it just, it really does make an ornament look nice. Okay, so we have it, two layers of batting on there, two layers of mat board. This will be the front. Okay, now we're going to check to make sure everything looks good, and it does, so I'm going to get some upholstery thread, and the reason I use upholstery thread is because it's very strong and it and will not snap or break as I, because you will use it, you will pull very hard when you're mounting things, and so it just is easy to work with. Okay, here we go, quilter's knot. I've got my, my needle threaded. I find the end of my thread. I put it like a plus sign on my needle. I wrap it, I'm gonna wrap it quite a bit, probably 10 or 15 times because I'll be, I need a big knot so that it doesn't go through the linen. Then I cover the, the thread wraps around the needle with my thumb and I pull it off of the needle and I hold it as I pull it all the way to the end of my upholstery thread and it creates a knot. Okay, there it is. All right, so then I'm gonna clip my tail and we're gonna do a running stitch around this one. Now then, my client didn't leave very much of a margin between her pieces, so that's why it's a little wonky, and um, because I, need, I needed to get as much fabric as I could to, in order for me to mount this onto a circle. A circle takes more fabric than what you think to mount it so I'm having to make do with what 
I was left to, to finish these. That's a good, um, a good thing to remember too, is that, you know, let's not be stingy when we're, when we're, um, when we're sewing or when we're stitching on linen or Ada, don't be stingy with your fabric. That's the last thing you need to do in life is because it just makes finishing that much harder. Be generous in your, in your allotments. Okay, once you come back to the beginning, you get all the way around it, you're going to put this down and then pull it. And then you're going to come back here to the front and make sure that everything is centered and looks good. Looks good. Now we're going to do our star. All right, so there we have it mounted the front and here's the back. Now then, I'm going to go ahead and make a um, knot on the, on the remaining part of this quilting or this upholstery thread. I don't need a big knot this time because this is just going to be when we sew our ornament together. Okay, so I got my needle threaded and ready to go. And next, I'm going to take my um, homespun. I have about a yard and a half of it. And what I'm going to do is I have learned that to make this edging, it's about four of these red stripes. You want to count about four of these red stripes. One, two, three, four. Then make your, your clip right here. That's about the good width for, for the edging and for the hanger. And then you just pull. Tear it all the way down. Okay, that's going to be our edging. Okay, so this will be our hanger. I like to make my hangers... Um, five inches. I like it to drop five inches. So I actually measure them. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So we've got our hanger here. And we'll set that to the side for right now. We've got our edging fabric. So, then what we're going to do next is I want to put just a dot of glue right there. And we're going to put our, um, the ends of our hanger on that dot of glue. It just kind of helps hold it. Won't do anything else other than just hold 
our hanger, our ornament hanger. Okay, so right there, I'm gonna put that. I'm gonna layer this on top of it. I'm going to get my threaded needle with a knot on the end. And I'm going to come up from underneath to hide my knot. See, you can't see my knot. And if you can, you just stick, take your needle and stick it down. And then we're going to make sure that this hanger is sewn on by just going back and forth. You want to make sure that it's in the center, which it is. Just go back and forth a couple of times to ensure that that hanger is sewn down so that we can just begin to sew together. Okay, so I'm going to just make a back and forth stitch <clears throat> starting at the hanger back and forth all the way around my ornament. I'm going to go from one side to the next. So from the homespun side to the linen side, back to the homespun side, just like that, back and forth. Little bites close to the middle of the ornament, not because you don't want to see, you don't want to see your stitches back and forth on this side to there. From the linen side to the to the gingham side. Okay? And pull tight as you go. You can't see my stitches all the way around till we get to the hanger. I'll speed it up. All right, so it's all the way around like that. Don't end off, but do go ahead and make a, um, a lasso and knot it through the lasso twice. One, two, and pull tight. Now we're going to sew on our edging. So what I do is I make a little running stitch on the end up, down, up, down, like that. And I'm going to pull it tight on to the ornament. Then I'm going to go and I'm catching the back side of the ornament and just a little bit of the front side and I'm going to sew that down. Okay. Now then what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of go grab it and go from one side to the next side and then from that side to the other back over to the other side just like that kind of in a triangular formation. I'm going to pull it, kind of squeeze it up and then I'm going to go right down in the middle of that and sew it onto our ornament like that. You want it to look wonky. So let's see it again. Let me show you again. I'm going to grab some material from both sides, kind of in a triangle formation, a diagonal going from one side to the next side. I'm going to pull it tight like that. And then I'm going to take a stitch through the back side of the ornament and through the front side of the ornament. And then I tie, I'm just sewing it on. 
So let me show you again before I speed it up. I'm going from this side across. Just a couple of stitches, okay? Like that. Get that through, then I'm gonna go a couple of stitches in the other direction back to where we started. Like that. I'm gonna pull it tight. And then I'm gonna take a stitch from the back side of the ornament to the front side of the ornament, catching the homespun and the front side. And I'm gonna pull it, and there you go. I'm gonna do it all the way around, just in this manner, all the way around. You can also turn it sometimes if you wanna make it twisty and then sew it down, however you wanna do it. You just want it to look, you know, ruffledy, not ruffled, but you want it to look, you know, kind of primitive and stringy with the torn homespun. Okay, I'm gonna speed it up. Okay, when you get back to the front, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a few tacking stitches through the two pieces, the front piece and the back piece and the ornament hanger, just to make sure that it's tacked well in place. And then on the back side, we are going to go in and out 
make our lasso go through our lasso twice and end off pull it tight clip it and then we were going to clip our homespun and there you go now then we're going to kind of trim tame some of our strings here but you want it to be generally uneven and kind of ragtag because that's what lends the um, appeal to this type of edging is that it looks kind of old and battered and um, you know rustic So I'm just going through and trimming some of these really long threads from the homespun off. Kind of tame them a little bit. All right, so we got this basically let me get my hanger tamed here okay so here we've got the ornament basically done now we're just going to do our embellishments which includes a bow and a raffia bow so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to do my raffia bow and how I do my raffia bows I make sure that I have a needle ready with a knot so what I do is I take my a single strand of raffia and I wrap it around my four fingers like this and then I pinch it in the middle And that's a bow. I take my my thread and my needle and it's knotted and I'm going through the middle of the raffia. You have to kind of pierce a couple of the raffias so that the knot holds. And then you wrap it. You come up under the wraps with your lasso and you make go through your lasso twice and you end off. Okay, I'm going to go I'm going to pierce the raffia bundles a couple of times here. So that they don't kind of move around very much. Okay. All right. Now we're going to set this to the side because we're going to add our other bow to this after we get our other bow made. So I'm going to set this over here in my pin cushion and I'm going to get my rusty bell. You can get rusty bells at Factory Craft Direct online. That's where I get mine. I'm certain you can probably get them somewhere else, but that's where I get mine. That's where I know that they are available at. They come in different millimeter sizes. I believe this one is a 10 millimeter bell okay so I have my thread knotted and I have a length of my homespun and I'm just going to cross the arms like a pretzel so a loop here and a loop here and I'm going to make sure that these are equal in size I don't want it very big and I'm going to come up from behind 
and then wrap a couple times with my thread around, pull it tight. I'm gonna wrap it one more time. And then from the back, where I started my knot, I'm going to go in, take a little bite, pull tight, take another little bite underneath those wraps, and then I'm going to go through my lasso twice and end off. Where is my lasso? Here it is, too many strings. Okay, so through my lasso twice. And end off. There's my bow. Okay. And now I'm going to add a um, my bell to it, my jingle bell. So I'm going to come up from behind. Get my bell. Go through it again to the back side. Come back through the shank of my bell. And one third, I would like to do it again a third time. Okay, then we're going to come back to the back again. I'm going to take a little stitch, pull tight, and then take another little stitch and end off and clip it all right so there's our jingle bell now we're going to sew this raffia onto the back so here's my raffia and i'm going to come up through the through the homespun bow And I'm just going to go back and forth, kind of tacking the two bows together a couple of times. And then I'm going to end off one last time on the back of the raffia. And clip. All right, so there is our homespun bow and our raffia bow. Okay, now then, I am going to put a dot of glue and I'm going to get a straight pin. So first, before I put my dot of glue, I'm gonna go ahead and start the straight pin through the two bows, okay? Okay, then I'm gonna put a dot of glue right on the top of this homespun, right between the legs of the hanger and I'm going to place my bow and I use my little handy dandy hanger and I hammer my 
pin down in there, use my chopstick to make sure that it's hidden and on well. Kind of play with my raffia to make it kind of puffy. Trim my arms of my bow. And there, my friends, is our ornament. Let's trim that raffia arm. I sure did enjoy sharing this with you today. I hope you enjoyed it. I have several other videos and written tutorials that are all free on finishing. Please follow me, subscribe, like my video. You can also see all my written or video tutorials that are in one place with links to all of them on my written blog, which is Learn to Finish with a Twisted Stitcher. I thank you so much. Have a great day. Bye-bye.